How's it going, YouTube? Chris here in my home theater. Got a brand new video for you today. Well, it looks like the weekend is starting a little bit early. Got off work early today. Wasn't, wasn't a whole lot going on. So me and my son just left work just about, I don't know, maybe about an hour or so ago. So I wanted to do a little video and show you some things uh, that's coming for the theater. Uh, Hopefully to have it done next week. Uh, I'm waiting on stuff to come in, so we'll let, let's let's turn this camera around. We can talk about it. So, guys, I know I, I'm pretty sure I have done uh, these uh, video on my room showing everything, uh, but definitely these walls is catching uh, everything. I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some kind of uh, get stuff off the walls. It's like lint and stuff. But anyway, uh, the, the room is done. I mean, you can see all the walls are done. I absolutely love it. I got, uh, I think this panel here is just a little bit higher, uh, from what I can see. So I'm gonna need to, I need to drop that one down a little bit, but I mean, they're all up. Everything's done. Uh, I'm probably gonna, uh, change this out to the fabric i'm gonna I'm keep this as far as i know i'm gonna keep this the uh, velvet i might change it to uh the dmd fabric but uh i know i'm gonna change the two sides i just i want it to blend better plus <laughs> i i put i put this side up first and then i put this side up i'm like why does it look different why and then i realized I put the fabric up upside down. The piles are running. Uh, let's see. The piles are running this way. And the other ones are running this way. <laughs> so, yeah, and a couple people picked it out. It didn't really bother me. But, I mean, I've already done all this. I might as well go ahead and do these two panels. I mean, it, it won't cost too terrible a lot. Uh, maybe about 100 bucks or so just to do those two panels with the fabric. And uh, it'll be worth it uh, when I get everything done. But what I wanted to talk about, and as you can see, I've already touched up floors. I must, I must have missed a spot right here. Yep, I need to touch that up. And I touched up around the back here. So trying to get the theater just looking good. Uh, one of the next things I'm going to do, this ain't what I'm going to do now, is I want to change. I want to get these rugs out of here. I want to get this carpet changed out to some type of, black i mean i don't want to even go with a charcoal gray i want black uh so i don't know i don't know when that's gonna happen because it's it, it'll be pricey to do because that's the reason why i went with this route but i'm gonna keep looking if i can find some carpet uh, to do myself i'll do that but what i wanted to talk about because i've been considering what what i wanted to do about these doors did i want to leave them like this I still see a little bit of reflection, and it's not bad. But guys, I got fabric coming. I got fabric make coming. We we actually gonna cover these doors. And what I did is I ordered because I don't like how I done that around there. And my buddy John from on Instagram, he told me about this stuff, and I didn't think it was gonna work. I, I ordered it. I'm gonna try it. It's actually a fabric make strip that you can. You can do designs with it, which would be pretty cool if I was looking to do some kind of designs. I might would have uh, done something and then done a top different color from the, from the bottom, but I didn't do all that. But you can do circles, so I'm going to do around the doorknobs, both doorknobs, and around the thing up there, so it'll look nice and tidy and look really good. But we're going to cover both of these doors in the DMD fabric and I think it's going to look wonderful and uh I, I done tested everything and you know when it sticks out you still got plenty of room to grab the door but this is only about three eighths uh three eighths tall so a little less than a half inch uh and I think it's going to look so good it's going to look so good guys uh just excited to get all this done and I've also I've been thinking about it because I have another set of 265 the uh, in-wall speakers 
hey, I might pull because I'm I, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix this. It's it's killing me. You know, all I got to do is loosen it up, move it. Up. I mean, I I, I want to fix that. I want this room looking pristine, better, a little bit better. So when I pulled the fabric down, I thought about mounting those in the wall. It ain't got to be real pretty, just mounting in there at an angle. I thought about doing that. I don't. I haven't made up my mind yet because these are working phenomenal, and I don't really care that they stick off the wall, but they work so good on front wides. It's amazing. So, I mean, it's like, I mean, when you sit down, I mean, look, you sit, that's, it's pointed right to, and you can hear them when they light up in, you know, certain movies that is encoded for that. Boy, they make some noise, and I love it. I'm so glad I was able to, you know, use my front wides, and this worked perfect for that. Um, let's see here. What else I do? What else did I do? Um, so I've been using this amp ever since it came in, this monolith amp, and it is tremendous at whatever wattage it is. 90 watts, 100 watts a channel. The box said 100 watts a channel. Some people said that uh, that Monolith underrates their amps. Yeah, that's true. Because they said this amp is 200 watts a channel. Listen, those uh, RTI 9s I have are power hungry. They rated 500 watts is what it takes to power them. And I've had the Emotiva XPR2s on them. And boy, they come alive. This Monolith is doing not just as good but it's doing good to be only 200 watts versus the 600 watts that i had on them before so monolith very underrated amps they are fantastic and think about this guys uh so this one's 200 watts a channel and the the 9 or 11x is like 3 by 200 and 100 by the rest of them and listen, now I know these are these are very efficient speakers, uh, but I know somebody, and y'all do too, you know, he's got JTRs. He's got JTRs running with a monolith LMX at 100 watts. And I know it sounds amazing. So these amps are very underrated, uh, very underrated. And uh, I absolutely love it. I ain't got my rack. I ain't got my, there we go. I ain't got my rack sitting there right. I've been messing around with this thing. Uh, let me tell you what else I did. Uh, my theater was running out of steam. I needed another 20 amp circuit and I was doggone. I found another line that was, it's, it's on a separate circuit by itself. Uh, so right now I took this S amp right here that's running the Chase Audio, the 418s in the front. So this amp is run on that line by itself. And guys, it made a difference. Ready Player One is probably one of the most brutal i think it's one of the most brutal home theater demos ever i mean if you know of another one let me know and i probably got it and i'll try it out i know i've got you know you know uh, godzilla king of the monsters i've got Kong versus godzilla jurassic parks and stuff like that but i'm telling you ready player one is brutal so what it would do is I'd have to turn this amp down because it was it was it was heating it up even with the fans. Now I put more fans on it and we're good. So we don't do that. But what it was doing, it was it was it was causing this to hit about 14 spike amps. And when it would spike, this monolith would cut off. Well I say cut off, it wouldn't do anything to the amp, but it was losing steam. It was losing steam, and the, the floor speakers would go silent. So this old bad boy right here ain't run through this no more. It's run on a separate circuit, totally separate, and I'm probably going to do this one, uh, even though I'm not pushing a whole lot of wattage with it. I think I got it on about like 600, 700 watts uh, powering the two subs that I got to get that video uploaded, by the way. Guys, that was a game changer. Game changer for the theater. It sounds amazing. Um, I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm very happy with what I'm hearing in the theater. But I wanted to tell you guys about that. Uh, the monolith amp is performing 
It's tremendous. This is on its own 20 amp circuit, and I'm probably gonna move this one with that because I mean, it, those two together would be fine because I mean, it should be fine. Um, but guys, <laughs> it's, it's crazy how good this theater sounds now. And it sounded good before. I mean, honestly, it did, and I was happy with it. But guys, I had no, I had no idea that this theater was capable of sounding the way it does now. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my review and my videos out there about this sub box that you're seeing here, this one and the other one. I was told not to use SCAR. Hey, that's fine to each own. That sub is $127. And I was playing Ready Player One. I wasn't even doing a, a Hertz test, which I did run some sweeps trying to get it, you know, broke in. And they say break them in. Some, some people say you don't have to break them in. I, I don't know. I broke them. I broke them. I did some tests and tried to get them broke in before I started pushing them. So with that being said, I ran some tests the other day of playing John Wick Chapter 4. And in the opening scene at listening position, the meter was hitting over 120 decibels. Now, that's loud for my theater. My theater ain't never hit that before. But I've moved. I did some stuff. Adding these subs, which I think are performing way better than the JBLs. And then I've run the dedicated line for the amps for the Chase Audios. And I mean, and, and everything has come alive. And I'm still going to add or more 18s in the front, and I may go with some just like this, or I may go the next step up, uh, 2,500 watt uh, subs. So I, I don't, I don't know yet, but uh, guys, these things are performing. Uh, I did put the dB meter kind of close here, and on John Wick, that was hitting 124 decibels, right at the, at you know, I don't remember how far I had it from the cone. I was hitting 124 decibels. And I will do some tests and run some tests and shoot video footage of it. Um, you know, here, and I'm probably going to do that here in just a little bit because I want to get these videos out. Of, and it's got, you know, my build process and, and I didn't do everything. But I, I just wanted to cover a lot of different stuff in this video to kind of tell you, you know, basically really to tell you what's going on. I'm, I'm fixing to cover these doors in, in DMD fabric with fabric mate strips. And uh, I just, I want, I, I guess I just want to get rid of all the paint um, except for the trim, you know, and the ceiling. I'm going to do some kind of, I'm going to do some kind of treatment on the ceiling. I got to find out. I might build some panels and, and mount up there or something. Something is going to, I'm going to do some kind of treatment up there too. I mean, the theater's amazing. The sound is amazing. But if there's any room to improve, I want to do it. So I'm just trying to figure things out right now. And uh, we, we're going to get something going here. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all following me along on my journey. It's been a long journey. And, uh, man, I just I cannot believe how, how far this theater has come just in just over a year. Just over a year, and and, it, and it's due to all you guys. I mean, y'all pushed me, gave me ideas, and helped me out. Uh, some has, I mean, it's really helped me out. Uh, but everybody has to, uh, to an extent, giving me ideas, and um, I can't thank y'all guys enough. I swear I can't. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just excited for the days to come. We ain't done yet. I there's gonna be more stuff uh coming along. Uh not much in equipment other than another amp and uh another mini DSP when I add other subs. I do want a kaleidoscape, I do want a new a new projector. So those those are are those are big big purchase things there. Um and I don't know when I can do that, but who who knows? Uh, maybe soon I, I can do something. So Guys, let's wrap this video up. Going along about 15 minutes and just wanted to kind of give an update on some things and let you know, guys, that I am going to be covering these doors. and I'll maybe try to do some videos on that uh, and we'll get something going there. So, uh, 
I was asking my little video today. I'm going to try to work on some of these videos for the subs. Oh, I know what else I got. I got some ISO feet for the subs. Uh, they'll be here tomorrow, actually. Uh, I did not go with the SVS, but I went with some. I swear the pictures, they look like they grabbed them from SVS. So I'm curious to see. They were a little bit cheaper. I'm curious to see how they perform. I want to put some on those subs. And if I feel like that they work good, I'm going to order some more to put on the, the chase subs behind the screen. So we're going to try to, and I don't, and I guess they don't improve it. We'll see. I mean, they say that that's a, a game changer. And, 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 and in my mind, I wanted to do something like that anyway. But uh, we'll see. Uh, they'll be here uh, tomorrow. So I may uh, shoot some more video footage and then kind of wait and add that in with, because it goes with the subs anyway. So, uh, I just, I failed to remember that until just now. So yes, uh, I'll probably shoot some more footage, uh, on the subs and, uh, then kind of add those to it. So guys, that's my video for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you again in the next video.